Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise. One of my favorite places on the planet and this is the road on the Humboldt County coast of California between Petrolia and Ferndale, California where I'm getting ready to enter the tsunami hazard zone here in the end times. Yes, the entire planet is now entering the tsunami hazard zone as today is, of course, Thursday, August 3rd, 2017, the day after World Overshoot Day where the tsunami of humanity creates a hazard for the entire planet. Um, but anyway, I am bringing you what I try to do every Wednesday, which is bring you my climate change meltdown roundup ramp. But yesterday when I attempted to do this, it was 108 degrees about, oh, 20 miles inland from here, probably 10 miles inland. So uh, I had your old climate refugee had to get his ass back to the beach where it is an absolutely gorgeous 64 degrees here in August and I can finally get around to my climate change meltdown roundup rant. And uh, needless to say, we're going to start our rant right here in California. No shit, Sherlock. Wildfire risk is high in California, the Northwest, and the Northern Plains. The threat of major U.S. wildfires will remain high throughout the month of August in California, Northern Nevada, parts of the Pacific Northwest, and the northern Great Plains. As a wet winter and spring produced thick grasses and brush all through the region. So this is you know, everyone claiming there were going to be no wildfires this year in California because of all the uh, all of the the rain. And in fact, uh, we're having as bad a wildfire season uh, as ever. Uh, and so you take a wet winter followed by a severe drought, at least in Montana and the Dakotas. Uh, good Lord, it's pretty much everywhere. And they're warning all of the people uh, coming out for the eclipse in the Pacific Northwest not to go up in a wildfire. 36 large wildfires were burning yesterday in nine states. Uh, California, of course, Oregon, Montana, so far this year, 39,000, so far in 2017, 39,000 wildfires have burned nearly 8,600 square miles. So how do you think that compares with last year, with 2016? Are we doing better or worse? How about... That com the 39,000 wildfires compares to 34,000 fires last year, the 8,600 square miles compares to the 5,500 square miles that were burnt up by the 1st of August last year. So, uh, anybody thinking that the wildfire uh, rampage 
uh, and across this country and this planet is going to take a rest in 2017. Got one thing to tell you. That was bullshit. Can't remember the uh, Alert Tribes member who sent me this um, this article um, about the kelp forest of California right off these beaches here. You know, I was noticing that there's a lot less dead kelp washing up this year on the beaches of California that I've noticed uh, like last year when I was up here and I took the wild guess the reason why not that much dead kelp is washing up on the beach is because there is no kelp left off the coast of California. So, uh, not sure which international business times, I believe. No shit, Sherlock. Vital California kelp forest vanishing due to global warming. Just as climate change and pollution are triggering a massive destructive bleaching of Australia's Great Barrier Reef, Global warming and a fundamental alteration in the Pacific Ocean ecology are destroying the nutrient-rich underwater kelp forest off America's west coast. Large tracts of the giant seaweed along hundreds of miles of coast have vanished in the past few years and a transformation so rapid that it has startled scientists. We have seen uh, north of San Francisco Bay a 93%, 93% collapse of Northern California's kelp forest and quickly growing even worse. The seaweed forests are considered among the most productive ecosystems on the planet that you can now kiss goodbye. Um, kelp is home to some 700 ocean species. And the warming water is, is uh, interferes with the normal upwelling of nutrient-rich cold waters, which helps the seaweed grow. Blah, blah, blah. We're going to go from the Pacific Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean mostly. Now, I've already been documenting all of the various ghost forest all over uh, California, particularly in the Sierras, but it was really bad. All of these dead forests along the Sonoma County coast don't seem to be quite as bad now that I'm up here in Humboldt, but let's take a trip across the country to the east coast of the U.S. Maybe next year I will bring you a personal report, several stories about the new ghost forest, ghost forest, what they are and why they are becoming more common. They're called ghost forests, dead trees along vast swaths of coastline invaded by rising seas, something scientists call one of the most visible markers of climate change. Uh, the process of uh, ghost forest has accelerated in recent decades as polar ice melts and raises sea levels, scientists say, pushing salt water farther inland and killing trees in what used to be thriving freshwater plains. Uh, scientists agree the startling sight 
of so many dead trees in once healthy areas is an easy to grasp example of the consequences of climate change. Uh, this is Matthew Kirwan from uh, Professor from Virginia. Quote, I think ghost forests are the most obvious indicator of climate change anywhere on the eastern coast of the U.S. This was dry, usable land 50 years ago. Now it is marshes with dead stumps and dead trees. Dead stumps and dead trees. Um, I was just doing a rant uh, about an hour ago about how Sancho Panza and I are literally climate refugees. We are literally climate refugees here in the good old U.S. of A. But uh, good God, uh, we could be in Asia, I guess where they're now stating in the mainstream and the alternative media, climate change will force mass migration of one billion people, well, one billion and two people by 2100. Well, I guess Sancho Pons is a person. And the Asian Pacific is the most vulnerable region to climate change. Bangladesh is the, the country most at risk, and poor people are to be hit the hardest, prompting migration on a massive scale. A sobering report by the Asian Development Bank has found, of course, is these development banks are making, uh, are the ones financing the destruction of the planet that is leading to the climate change, leading to the migration of one billion people. Okay. Uh... Anyway, this is a long, uh, the, the bank new report shows that the region faces severe consequences for the environment, the economy, and human living conditions as a result of climate change. Uh, you know, saying anybody who thinks them Muslims heading into Germany is a, is a migrant crisis. Yeah, right. Good Lord. Um, according to the report, a temperature increase of six degrees Celsius six degrees Celsius above pre-industrial times is now projected for some parts of Asia and the Pacific by the year 2100. Such increases in temperature will lead to drastic changes in the region's weather systems, agriculture, fisheries, biodiversity, trade, and urban development. And these large temperature increases are the likely result of a reliance on fossil fuels, not to mention the, the industrial infrastructure allowing the, the endless growth of fossil fuels, which continues to dominate the region's energy mix. And now, extreme heat events that typically happen once every hundreds of millions of years will become a daily 
year-round occurrence with more of profound effects in the tropics. Uh, what they're calling a five sigma weather event that normally occurs once every three million years could become commonplace by the late 21st century and the living conditions resulting in the tropics would make it almost impossible. Almost impossible for people to live outside prompting climate migration on a massive scale. Now let's go to Bangladesh. Uh, if you think this is a problem uh, limited to Bangladesh, let's go over here to Miami Beach or what uh, left of it uh, for our Al Gore quote of the week as Al Gore was touring Miami Beach, which is today as I'm having this rant going underwater, as Miami turns on all of the pumps, but Mayor Miami Mayor Levine is sensible enough to realize the city can only do so much, quoting the mayor, it's going to get worse and worse as the tide comes up and as Al Gore dryly notes, it's kind of hard to pump the ocean. Do you think so, Al? Kind of hard to pump the ocean. So we were just having this story about how parts of Asia were, are looking at six degrees Celsius uh, by uh, th this century. And so let's go over to India and listen to how the Hindustan Times is reporting on, on, on this new research. Huh. Earth likely to warm more than 2 degrees Celsius by 2100. Wow! And not meeting the Paris climate deal target could have dramatic consequences on livelihoods. Yeah, so do, do you think so? World temperatures are likely to rise by more than 2 degrees Celsius this century, surpassing a tipping point that a global climate deal aims to avert. Scientists said on Monday, uh, a study published by the journal Nature Climate Change shows a 90% chance that temperatures will increase this century by 2 degrees to 5 degrees Celsius, while another study from the University of Washington found only a 5% chance that warming could be kept below 2% Celsius, 5 degrees, one of Five degrees, my ass. Come on now, that ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. Missing that target would have dramatic consequences on people's livelihoods. Yes. Uh, do you uh, think so? Um. Uh. Anyway, okay, enough of this unadult well, unadulterated horseshit. You know, now it's gotten to the point where 
an optimistic rosy scenario is that we have a 5 to 10 percent chance, read a 0 percent chance uh, of, of going into a burning lake of fire. This is a, another story about the, uh, the, the, the same study. Uh, Adrian Rafferty from the University of Washington in The Guardian, quote, We're closer to the margin than we think. We have very little time left. The public should be very concerned. Hmm. Do you think so? Uh, for now, the outlook is grim. There you go. That, that's the, uh, that is the uh, overstatement of the week. Here in the mainstream media, for now, the outlook is grim. Imagine what the outlook is going to be 10 years from now. Okay, now, now, now looking at the one and a half degree target, uh, we have less than a 1% chance of, of happening there. Oh God, I need to get a, oh my clueless moron, next to this story is the story, Arkansas man accused of sexually assaulting neighbors' donkeys, but we'll get back to that story on Saturday. Okay, so of course, where I literally am heading now is to probably northern Washington state, somewhere between the Olympic Peninsula and the northern Cascades, getting close to British Columbia uh, as I can, and I turn on the mainstream media this morning and find Vancouver is getting temporary fountains and misting stations to beat the heat, with the potential for record-breaking temperatures in Vancouver, British Columbia this week. Uh, the city is offering tips to residents on how to safely handle the heat. Uh, here is the city's community centers will ensure water and sunscreen are available for homeless and vulnerable people. Uh, most of the city's buildings have air-conditioned lobbies or common space where people can go to cool off. They're setting up fountains, misting stations, and guess what the high is supposed to be today? The high with all of this going on, 86 degrees. Uh, I, I am dreaming of 86 degrees, where it is going to be 110 in Happy Camp, California. I bet Happy Camp, California uh, would kill for 86 degrees. It, there's probably not a low tonight of 86 degrees in, on the California-Oregon border. Okay, we're going to go from Vancouver, British Columbia to the uh, to the extreme northern Atlantic Ocean or southern Arctic Ocean, uh, whatever you want to call that. This is just the latest research uh, that I've gone over um, this several times before. Look out, Europe! Melting Arctic ice could weaken the Gulf Stream, researchers say. The loss of Arctic sea ice as a result of global warming could have dramatic and catastrophic effects on the climate of much of the northern hemisphere, according 
to a new report from Yale University and the University of Southampton, I guess that's in England, uh, has recently demonstrated that the ongoing loss of sea ice is actively changing today one of Earth's main systems for transporting water. This is the AMOC, the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation. To put it simply, AMOC circulates cold, dense water from the North Atlantic southward and warm, salty water from the tropical Atlantic northward. This system plays a major role in maintaining the global climate and its deterioration could have a dramatic effect. Uh, and they're just trying to figure out what it could be. Uh, you, you know, so this is where uh, it, what it could be is that Europe as a result of global warming and climate change, that if the warm uh, Gulf Stream uh, doesn't reach Europe anymore, that England is going to look a whole lot like Newfoundland. But of course, Newfoundland is starting to look like Honduras anyway. So uh, nobody, nobody knows what the fuck this means. Nobody knows. Pull your head out of your ass. We're fucked. We're entering a tsunami hazard zone on this planet. Long as we're uh, over there. Uh, I can't believe the Washington Post actually let this is their spin on the same story. This strange spot in the Atlantic Ocean is resisting, is resisting global warming, and scientists think they know why. Uh, yes, a mysterious warming hole in the North Atlantic Ocean and an anomalous zone of cooling temperatures just above it, which has fascinated and puzzled scientists for the past few years, may be evidence of a more troubling process at work. Um, and this is the Washington Post, pretty much the same story as uh, that I just went over about how the AMOC is is just completely going off the rails. Um, there is uncertainty in the scientific community about what this means. Despite this debate, Many scientists are still confident that climate change will still have a significant influence on the AMOC in the future. And this new study reaffirms the idea that multiple seemingly unrelated consequences of global warming may be may be closely tied to one another after all. Okay, as long as we're over there in Europe, what's going on in Poland? Poland, Polish power demand hits summer record as heat wave persists. Polish electricity demand set a record for a summer morning on Tuesday, the grid operator said. Poland, which generates electricity mostly from coal-fueled power plants, faces the risk 
of power shortages when temperatures reach extreme levels as increased demand overloads the system. Do you think so? From Poland back over to India. Well, I guess we finally have some good news. Study links climate change to farmer suicides in India. A new study links thousands of farmer suicides in India to changes in temperature and rainfall. Um, there you go. Let's listen to uh, India Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Narendra Modi, one of the single biggest planet eaters on planet Earth. Uh, explaining this to us. Mother Nature gives us life and nurtures us, but at times, natural catastrophes, warning, warning. Bullshit. Alert. such as floods and earthquakes, wreak havoc on a massive scale. Climate change, altered weather cycles, and transformations in the environment are also having a big negative impact. And that fucker ought to know, because he is responsible for a huge portion of it. Good God, I'm already past 30 minutes, and I still got five stories. Here is a new study showing that rising greenhouse gas levels could make your food less nutritious. Climate change is not only making the planet more at risk for flooding, economic collapse, record heat waves, diseases, and extinction of species. It could also make some food less nutritious. There you go. Uh, anyway, I assure you that's going to be the least of your problems. Here is, what is on the Guardian's mind? Uh, climatologist Howard Lee having a story. Underground magma triggered Earth's worse mass extinction with greenhouse gases. Coincidence doesn't prove causality, but when the same two things happen together over and over again through the vast span of geological time, there must be a causal link. Of some 18 major and minor mass extinctions since the dawn of complex life, most happened at the same time as this uh, volcanic phenomenon called a large igneous province, uh, which were accompanied by abrupt climate warming, expansion of dead zones, and ocean acidification, like today. There you go. So, uh, this is an interview with Seth Burgess of the U.S. Geological Survey uh, breaking all of this down, but let's get to the bottom line. Are there parallels today? The more science learns of these past greenhouse gas-driven events, the more uncomfortable the parallels to today become. I asked Burgess if it was ridiculous to make the comparison between what's happening today to these past extinction events. Quote, no, I don't think the comparison is ridiculous at all. 
and I think the time scales over which the environment changes associated with mass extinctions are frighteningly similar to the time scales over which our current climate is changing. The Anthropocene will more likely resemble the end Permian and end Cretaceous disasters. There you go. We are heading into the end Permian and end Cretaceous disasters looking at this research. Uh, I would like to spend some time on this story, but uh, this this could be an entire uh, rant of its own. Unmasking the climate change deniers. I think Fiesta Cranberry might have sent me this. What's at the root of the climate denial movement? Stanford University researcher Benjamin Franta traces the history of the insidious forces shaping the movement to obstruct genuine action on the climate crisis. Take a wild fucking guess what is at the root of the climate denial movement. It is money. Money is at the root of the climate denial movement. And thank you, Benjamin Franta, for breaking, uh, breaking this down. Uh, the bottom line, uh, we must not let the fossil fuel industry continue to obstruct climate policy. That means following the money that funds the pseudoscience of delay and exposing the co-opted scholars who feed false images of debate to the public the same arguments and people used by the fossil fuel industry to block climate policies decades ago are back, meaning back with the, in the Trump scene. For the sake of humanity, we must not let them succeed again. There you go. Two more uh, quick ones. Here's from the New York Times. The climate lab that sits empty. And this is talking about this climate research station and this equipment and all of this stuff that is vital to addressing uh, global warming is just one of the many casualties of the Trump administration, uh, which is another way of saying the fossil fuel industry. Uh, shutting this is uh, a casualty of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric administration. Uh, there you go, sitting empty because everyone has been fired. Oh shit, I have a new message from Treebeard that I forgot to flag. Anyway, we'll hear from Treebeard in a little while, but we have to close with this hilarious story uh, from International Business Times about the methane in Antarctica. Good God! There's as much goddamn uh, methane buried in Antarctica as there is in the Arctic, but don't worry, 
these organisms are eating greenhouse gases. Good things come in small packages like the microbes that live thousands of feet below the icy surface of Antarctica and might be. These microbes might be the world's last line of defense against global warming. Here's just one problem, guys. Uh, you have to get down to into the article to find out the uh, the 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 problem is. Of course, these microbes would not be a complete remedy for melting related climate effects. However, they consume methane for fuel, which is a good thing. And take a wild guess what they convert it into. How about carbon dioxide? So that waste product would still be released into the atmosphere as Antarctica melts. Guys, read the sign. We are entering a tsunami hazard zone. If you want to see the tsunami uh, bearing down on this planet, I suggest you look in the mirror. And anyway, I'm going to enter the tsunami hazard zone, and assuming I can get back out the other side, I will uh, stop somewhere and when I find the internet and bring you our latest uh, We Are So Fucked report from the Arctic by Treebeard. And then uh, I, I don't know where the fuck I'm going today, guys. This, 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 this whole adventure has just, has just caved in on top of me. This, this whole fucking everything has, has collapsed. And I'm just trying now just to dig myself out of the ashes and, and head on to fucking Washington State, I guess. Smoke them if you got them, guys. We are so fucked. Bye, guys.